Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, midweek Wednesday. Got a couple things to talk about. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is we got a new mascot in the shop, and I'll tell you how that happened. You know, for those of you who have been watching uh, the channel for a while, you know, uh, during when the COVID first hit over here, I had a stray cat come and dump a couple couple litters of kittens here before I can catch her and have her fixed. So I wound up with a bunch. I got like seven cats, okay? But uh, three of them are inside and four of them are outside, you know, the outside cats. And one of the outside cats is uh, Pipes. <laughs> I named him Pipes because he, he, uh, he was the only one that meowed when he was younger. So he had a set of Pipes on him, you know. There was three, the three of them. There was Pipes, Yikes, and Stripes. <laughs> pipes had the, the uh, vocals. Uh, stripes, obviously, was, he was a, you know, had black stripes on him. And Yikes, he was just a scaredy cat. He would never come near me or anything. Yikes has since disappeared. I don't know where he is, but uh, Stripes and Pipes is still there. Anyway, Pipes brings around, he catches a lot of critters. From, I don't know why he does it. I think he thinks he's doing me a favor by bringing these things. He's always bringing me snakes. I don't know where he gets snakes. I live in Queens. Where do you find snakes in Queens? This guy's finds snakes like, like one a week. He brings it over and... Like, look what I got. And I'm like, someday he's going to bring over a snake and it's going to bite my butt. And I'm going to be in trouble. So uh, yesterday he had something in his mouth. And he don't injure him. He just brings them to me. Like, hey, you know, a little something for you. So he brought a uh, uh, the new mascot. So check this little guy out. He's a little mouse and he's uh, he's really small, right? He, may, I, he was so small. I picked him up and it was like, you know. But he's a quick guy, so it just goes to show you how fast Pipes is to be able to catch this guy. Anyway, so I felt bad for him. I couldn't put him back out. Pipes would just get him again and, you know, maybe hurt him eventually. Or And it is getting starting to get cold out. And I said, you know, so whenever I get, you know, mice around this time of year, if one gets in the house or something like that, I, I always have a uh, fish tank set up that's all set up, ready for him. I'll keep them to the springtime and then let them go in the spring. But, uh... This little guy, I, I was a little worried he wouldn't make it over the night, but he did. He's a, he's a fighter. So we got a new mascot, so uh, we got to come up with a name for him. Maybe you can figure out a name for this little guy. Uh, next up, uh, or first up, I should say, uh, we have a, a, a subscriber to the show. By the name of Alan Kujawa, is it? Alan had asked, he's like, you know, how do you find out about these uh, steam engine shows and, and things like that? And, you know, I always, you know, promote these things. I'm saying, if you don't go to one of these shows, you don't know what you're missing. They really are wonderful. We always have a great time. And um, what I usually do is when I started going to one or two shows, I would ask people at the shows, I say, hey, do you have any other shows you go to? What's your favorite show? And that's how I'd find the really good ones. But let me show you how you find out where shows are in your area. Now, this here is what we affectionately call the Bible of, of shows. And this is in the United States. Now, I don't know if they have an equivalent over in the UK, but I know they do have a lot of steam shows in the UK, but you have to find out over there. But over here in the United States, we have the Farm Collector Show Directory. Now, you can see this is an older one, but uh, I just, I tried to order the new one today. Uh, something's with the credit card. I got to, you know, reorder. But you, uh, there's a, a website you go to and uh, you go online and you can order it right there, you know, with either PayPal. Now, they're back ordered because they don't ship out until February. So when you order it, uh, they will, you know, send it to you as soon as it's off the presses. And it's, uh, this is the uh, Ogden Publications are the ones who put it out. But what this is, it's uh, it shows all the shows in the United States, along with some, you know, it's funny, like, you know, we're not crazy about advertisements, but I love the advertisements that are in here because they're all kinds of advertisements we'd be interested in, you know, like, uh, you know, different uh, farm implements, th things like that, you know, so the advertisements uh, are cool in here, but it's, uh, they list the shows in different ways. For example, this is obviously all show advertising. You can see it's here in that tab. Here's the show listing. So it goes by, uh, you can see the state, you know, they have the states here that they show and, and here are all the shows that you would see in Wisconsin. So if you, let's say you live in the bottom of, of Wisconsin here, you look at uh, 32 and then you would go here to number 32. Uh, here we go. And you could see that's the 27th annual fall harvest days, you know, and you could see the September 14th. So it could go by state like we just did, 
or it could go by uh, date. Uh, they also have these listed, I think it's in the back here, here. Uh, they list them here by the type of tractors or farm implements you're looking for. Uh, it's also listed by uh, date and, and oh, so they cross reference it all the time. So if you have a certain date that you're free, you look at what state's available. But it's really interesting because you can see like in Michigan, how many shows they have, you know, some states, this is Massachusetts, some states don't have as many shows. You'll see like, for example, Louisiana, <laughs> it's a little light on shows and so is Maine. Uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry to say, Cliff, what's going on? There's only two shows in Maine, one and two down there, and that's uh, July 7th and July 27th. So anyway, but this is really good, Kentucky, and you could see here that uh, oh, Indiana, Indiana's got great shows, right? Look at that. But this is how you find out. So if you're interested in, in hitting any of these shows or, or making a trip or something, Get yourself this book. It's $20. It's like $17 with, you know, it's less than $20. Great investment. Okay, next up, I was looking at these and I said, you know, I feel like doing these. These are just a beautiful little pair of uh, pliers. That, um, Patrick, 357, Mag, Dan, and myself were happened to be at that dollar. one. Uh, it was a dollar table and I should pick these up and I, I offered I said you want them they like nah those things are... but you know what I said there's writing on there I, my eyes are gone but you could probably make it out some of you guys let's do a quick wire brush take a look at what we got okay here's our post wire brush evaluation <clears throat> and you could see the immense pitting that's going on here now, I believe these were blued, and sometimes when you have things that are blued, you get this, I don't know why, bluing doesn't really protect the metal. In fact, it, sometimes it, it creates this deeper pitting. But anyway, you can see that, you see that the pitting we're dealing with on the handles. It is a red devil. You can see that red devil. And uh, it's made in the USA, and it's uh, number 3800. Is that it? Yeah, 3800. So, uh, the, again, the cutting jaws are in great shape, which is always nice. Got in all here with the Dremel and everything, all in the inside, so it's fully wire brushed. The jaws look terrific, but look at all that pitting. You see, it's, uh, and along the face, along, uh, this is just mostly staining on this side. And, but the handles, the handles have tremendous pitting all the way around them. That's because the hand sweat and everything and the salt from your hands really is conducive to getting this kind. And look how deep that is. So can we fix it? Is it worth it? Of course it is. Let's do it. Now, this is a procedure I usually don't show on the channel because it could be a little bit unsafe if you don't know what you're doing. And, and what I do... Uh, is you you brace the uh, grinder against your body and you basically drag the tool across the tip. Now, I was taught this by my buddy Three Finger Jim, whose motto was safety schmafety. But uh, if you're careful and you you take your time, it really isn't unsafe. It's just you got to be careful and you got to hold on to what you're doing. But that's just I thought I'd throw that in. Now, what's interesting to note is the S&H company was founded by uh, Landon Smith and John Hemingway back in 1898 and was eventually sold to Crescent Tools in 1926, but the Red Devil was their trademark. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these Red Devil pliers look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. This was a lot of fun. You know, a $1 pair of Red Devil pliers. Let's take a look at what we did here. Again, it didn't take it to a mirror, but I just really kept going and kept going. 
got all, remember all the pits that were around the sides, and I can't tell you how smooth these feel in the hand now. And again, you can see the, the lettering came out real good. Red Devil. Smith and Hemingway Company, USA. Number 3800. Um... Just beautiful, huh? Look at all the facets and everything is kept. All the pits are out. The handles that were so, I mean, so pitted from everything. You know, they're all gone. The pits are all gone. It's all polished out. It has a, a kind of a screwdriver on one side and a point on the other that, if you, I guess, like an awl. But they just feel so nice in the hand, you know? Again, nice finish on here. But isn't that pretty for a dollar? And I, what's even better is, let me show you how these work. These are fun, phenomenal. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think the jaws were ever used on here. But let me show you here. We like the zip tie test. Listen for the snap. Hear that? All the way up and down the jaws. Just beautiful. And, of course, you know, these, the side cutters, again, they were in nice shape. I don't think they were ever used. Let me show you how they work. Uh, take a piece of wire here. Look at this. I mean, it was like they are just, these are always great cutters, the side cutters. Just a fantastic pair. What a pair for a dollar, huh? One dollar. So, I uh, really enjoyed doing these. Okay, we got some extra credit going on here. I paid four dollars for these beautiful snap cut. You know, the, the engraving isn't too uh, deep on here, but you can see it says snap cut. Number 119, it says original, and this was a Seymour Smith. Uh, these are fantastic. I, I did a, an episode on these, and my grandmother had these, but I I, bought, I couldn't pass it by for that. But I, I'm going to do a quick cleanup because I use these all the time. But, you know, you can't have that on. They can't have the rust and everything. Quick cleanup, and uh, right for extra the extra credit. credit, we cleaned these up. Look how nice these came out, huh? I mean, look at the blade and everything came out just beautiful just phenomenal right the handles all the rust is off again the stampings now this was my grandmother's pair here notice the stamping you know is much deeper on that Seymour Smith see and over here it's it's probably a different year too because if you notice not only is the stamping deeper it also has the patent number and I I don't see the patent number on here so you know it could be a different year they look uh, almost identical in size this one here has a Phillips uh, to hold the brass uh, anvil in this one here has it maybe this is older because it has here but it is they both feel very similar in, in construction this one here has a, an extra hole here that's missing over here I always find that interesting, you know, the different variants when they make tools, you know, over the years. Uh, but until you know which one. But let me show you how this one works. Again, uh, what's important, polish the blade, you know. And when you polish the blade, it makes it so smooth to cut through anything. And I went out and I grabbed a branch. Now, I got some uh, assorted uh, leaves and stems from the backyard. We'll give it a shot here. And you can see we'll... Uh, just give a cut. They always, the anvil cut is always cut nice. They always give a, uh, and again, they're not meant for a, for gardening where you're going to transplant for those who use the side-by-sides. These are meant for when you're doing cleanups and you got to cut things out because they really have a lot of power. And here's a uh, another type of branch. And you can see, you know, this, the thicker it gets, it's like the better these things work. You can cut through, all, all day long you can cut through these. So... I always love these, and, and especially, like I said, when you polish up the, the blade, it cuts so much easier, especially on some of that heavier dried uh, dried branches. So in closing, there we have two nice little projects today. It's always nice every once in a while to do a uh, uh, one of those extensive before and after projects, you know, the ones that look like real junk, and then they come out like looking much better. It just, there. it does something for your soul, I swear it. It's just a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.